Hey guys, thank you so much for swimming on over here to the Awesome Drone Show. Uh, just, I want to make sure uh, y'all know this before this, I have my dog in here today. Um, uh, I just want to, I, I had her in here, so if, if anything gets like moved around or any like any like little noise just so you know that's that's what's going on as i have my dog in <laughs> here today yeah yeah Hopefully. <laughs> yeah she's she's a puppy and so she's very curious so i just want to make sure y'all know that but uh we uh i bet we went to go watch but you know we, we didn't go see it but like the the show the last of us mm -hmm. just ended mm -hmm. uh and we wanted to talk about it a little bit and our feelings on the show um i want i i do want to say that and it's probably controversial amongst uh, probably a lot, but in all honesty, the TV show I think is better than the game. Yeah, I, I can go back and forth with it. Uh, there are certainly a lot of aspects. I, I do definitely feel like they built up to the ending. What, yeah. what happens in the ending, which I, we won't talk about spoilers just yet. Mm. What happens in the ending, I feel like the show built up to that uh, yeah. a lot. No, I won't say a lot better, but it built up better than yeah. the game did. The, the 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 changes that they made, the major changes, the, yeah. the few mi the major changes that they made in the show, yeah, or well, and some minor changes, mm -hmm. just added to the build up to the end. I'm not trashing the game. I think the game is great. It tells a great story, and honestly, we wouldn't have the amazing. We wouldn't have this like amazing TV show if it weren't for the template of the game. Games have to be written differently than TV shows. With TV shows. You have time to watch people. You have time to watch people live, right. do things. Yeah. In games, you have a little bit of time with that. You mm -hmm. have your cutscenes, but you also want to make sure that your cutscenes are less than your gameplay. Right. Yeah. You know? Also, the gamers are gonna get yeah. really bored. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'd be really boring. With TV shows, you. I mean, obviously less because no gameplay. But the <laughs> the portions that were that make the game exciting have to almost be lessened in order for us to see the characters live. Right. You know, and so that's kind of the difference on that. And that's where the show does things different. And it's very apparent from the beginning. The beginning starts off how the game probably couldn't have. Mm -hmm. Because the the show starts off with a big a lot more with Sarah. You see this relationship that Joel lost. I mean you do get a a pretty clear image in the game mm -hmm. of that relationship. But you definitely get a lot more and you get a lot more with Sarah. And you really, and so you connect with Sarah a lot more, mm -hmm. therefore making this loss of Joel's impact, the impact being so much more. And this episode also had uh, one of the first uh, pretty, I mean, it was a minor change, but it really added to the build up to the end. And that's uh, near the end of the episode when they're trying to get out of the city where they were living. Uh, they're stopped by like a patrolman. Mm -hmm. uh, and that scene is in the game. But they added a little element to the scene in the show to where um, Joel has a flashback to the night that Sarah died. And he's kind of put in a, sim a similar situation with Ellie, mm -hmm. uh, who he just met. But it really shows that he subconsciously views Ellie as a daughter figure, even this early on in the story. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of adds even more to their relationship. And just one quick complaint I have about this episode. It's not a huge complaint, but it is a pretty big moment in the story. And that's when uh, Ellie reveals that she's bit to Joel and uh, Tuss. And uh, it it's, it's happens pretty much at the very end of the episode. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was really rushed. I mean, I'm not trying to compare the show too much to the game, but in the game, it had a, little, a lot more impact. It was a lot more, not slowed down, but like they spent time on that moment. Not too, not too much time, because they were still in a rush. But in the show, I just felt like it was really rushed, like glazed over. Now, episode two was basically quite a bit the same. Uh, the major differences that people talked about a lot is like you don't really get... And this is also has to do with more like episode one is like so one of the main minor changes you have like you don't have the gas masks mm -hmm. um which i know a lot of people are mad about that but it also has to do with like realism when it comes to like spores it pretty much everybody would be infected within like a few hours like it's right. like really <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah definitely yeah. especially with uh, how grounded they try to make this virus i mean obviously it's still sci-fi it's still mm. nothing that ha that exists in the real world yeah. i mean cordyceps exist but not any that can exist in humans, but they try to make it as real as possible. Yeah, uh, which that also leads into another point with the second episode, which also they had in the first episode was a uh, beginning scene showing a little bit before the outbreak happened and showing like uh, scientists. And, well, the, the first episode had the interview like in the '60s where it kind of explained 
how this virus came to be or could have happened and then did happen. Uh, and then the second episode shows the first uh, victim, the first person to get it and how the scientists of the world handled it. And that, that one lady, I, I don't know what the actress's name is, who was a scientist in mm-hmm. that, the second episode at the beginning. She did great. Yeah, like she her, really did. Her, her fear was just like set the mood for the rest of the yeah, episode. Yeah. Another small change they did with the second episode is how Tess dies. Uh, I thought it was really cool because in the game, she dies because I think Fedra finds them and she's bit. And so she's like, hey, y'all just go and I'll stay here. Mm-hmm. And Fedra comes in. I think she probably, I think she kills like maybe two of the guys. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't think they actually show it. I think yeah. you just hear it mm-hmm. uh, as Joel and Ellie are running away. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, I think uh, you hear, because I was watching a little bit of the game and you hear them say like, uh, she killed two of our guys. Or something oh, okay. like that. I can't remember for right. sure. Um, so she kills two of the guys and then they kill her. And then Joel and Ellie still have to, oh, well, Joel basically has to still kill a lot of guys. Mm. So in the game, it's like a sacrifice. But it doesn't really do anything mm-hmm. because they, he still has to kill a whole bunch of them. Right. Which, yeah, it's a game, so you... He, he doesn't have to kill two of them. How many arrows did you bring? All of them, like 11. 11? 11. There, there are 100,000 aliens out there. And I killed 11 of them. You're welcome. He still has to kill a lot of them. And it's a game, so like you, it's... It's another moment to have Joel kill people so you can enjoy the game. In the show, however, it would have just kind of felt lackluster. Mm-hmm. It would have just felt like, what's the point of her death just now? Because nothing actually happened. Right. So I like how in the show, what they did was instead they had uh, a whole bunch of infected come running after them. But then she blows them all up and kills all these infected that would have eventually caught up to Joel and Ellie because they were running fast, you know? Yeah. So they definitely would have caught up to him. Her death in the show, it really does mean a lot more and it's a lot more significant. Now, we will get to the most controversial episode of this <laughs> entire show, which is episode three. A lot of people didn't like this and I'll say this, there were, you know, there, there were obviously like your stupid idiots that just hated it and they didn't really look past anything like, oh, gay, gay guys? No. Yeah. Awful. <laughs> right. You know, there were those idiots, you know, mm. but there were some people with legitimate criticisms that I honestly were, was thinking when I first watched it. Mm. And those criticisms was the idea of it being a filler. Now it kind of depends on what your meaning of a filler is. Cause I think, I think the, the term filler is kind of thrown around yeah. too like too much. Yeah. It's a little overused at this point. <laughs> yeah. Cause if you really look into it, a filler literally has nothing to do with your main characters. It has nothing to do with the main characters, um, whether it's direct or indirect. You know, mm-hmm. it has nothing to do with their. It has nothing to do with them. They're not a part of it. Not only are they not a part of it, but it doesn't have anything to do with their development. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, it has a lot to do with Joel's development specifically. Exactly. It had it had a huge impact, honestly, and it's a, it's a reason why I love this change that they made. Mm -hmm. Because Bill in the game, because if you haven't played the game, Bill is still alive whenever Joel and Ellie go to his house. Uh, And he helps them find a car and a battery. But in the show, they're already dead. Mm -hmm. Uh, But by the time Joel and Ellie get there, Bill and Frank are. And uh, it adds to it because Bill writes a note Mm -hmm. to uh, Joel. And in that note, he talks about how before the outbreak happened, he hated the world, he hated people. But during the outbreak he was able to find someone that he actually cared about and actually wanted to protect yeah and actually felt purpose towards yeah and he pretty much passed on that feeling to joel pretty much saying find well i mean in the note he's talking about tess but obviously he doesn't know that tess had just died but like that message still carries for ellie mm-hmm. to joel yeah and you can see it in joel's face not and yeah. honestly if there's one thing i love about Pedro Pascal's acting in the show is mm. just the such subtle acting that he has in the show. But I was wrong because there was one person worth saving. That's what I did. I saved him. Then I protected him. That's why men like you and me are here. We have a job to do. And God help any motherfuckers who stand in our way. All the uh, the changes that they made, the little nuances that they mm. added to Joel's character, Pedro Pascal did perfect in portraying that. Yeah, like I've seen people say that. 
I've actually seen someone saw their, their pro- say that their problem with this show is that he's too hardened mm-hmm. and he's too like he doesn't have this charm like in the game. But I feel like you can really see it a lot in a lot of like very small details in his acting. If you go back to season two, I mean season two, episode two, when they're walking in that hotel that has like water all in it, mm-hmm. there's like a part whenever Ellie like like gets scared of the skeleton and falls back. Yeah. And so Joel helps her up. Mm-hmm. And it's so minor, but he like looks down at his hand. And almost, you can see him thinking. You mm-hmm. can see him just thinking about back to his daughter mm-hmm. and, and connecting his daughter to Ellie and then being like, no, and throws it away. Like, like no, that's, that's not her. I can't care about her. Right. You know, I'm not supposed to. And so you can see these little tiny details, details in these little tiny... I, um, I don't know what to call it. Like, I, always, I always use, like say, like micro-acting. It's probably not the right term. It's just acting. But mm-hmm. still, you know, like it's not this big acting. It's very, very subtle, but it adds so much. And the thing about see, episode three, I keep saying season. Like <laughs> the thing about episode three is like in the game, Joel leaves Bill seeing that there's really not a reason to like care or to like find love or to find someone mm-hmm. w- to bring purpose to his life in the game, right? Because in the game, and for those people who were, were really mad about this episode, it was heavily hinted at in the game that jo- that Bill was gay. Right. Um, it wasn't explicitly said, but mm-hmm. it was made decently clear. Or at least the intention was mm-hmm. there. Like, it was yeah. pretty clear. Yeah, he said partner, and, you know, partner doesn't mean 100% anything. But then you get into, like, whenever he finds Frank dead, his reaction to that, mm-hmm. um, he completely breaks out of this hardened version of himself which still could mean friends right Mm. but then there's a note and the way he reacts to that note afterwards right you know and some people even say like this is frank uh, frank wrote that like act like he's hating bill to make bill feel like to make bill not care about it you know right yeah and then there's obviously the gay yeah the gay porno mag mag (laughs) in uh frank's truck as if it's frank's truck yeah but still you add it all together right it's heavily hinted at that Bill and Frank were in a relationship. Mm. Uh, this show just really does so much more with it. Again, in a game, you can't have a a whole uh, cutscene of this relationship happening. You know, like it's it's it, you want to have like the action, you want to have the killing. So you right. know, the game can't do all this, but that's where the show comes in to add more to the t- to add more to the themes of this show right yeah and that and so at the end of this sh- at the end of this episode instead of joel leaving bill not seeing any reason to care or in any reason to find purpose he leaves with almost like there's this hope because you have bill this guy who like pretty much guarded his heart before mm-hmm. the pandemic even you know finding love finding that person worth saving that person worth protecting you know that person who brought ha- purpose to him Here's Joel saying, reading this like, hey, like maybe, you know, and you see that very subtle maybe in his face when it, after after he's done like hearing the, the note. Right, yeah. In the game, he pretty much just was like a, this grumpy old man. Well, yeah. he wasn't that old, but this grumpy man is is like comedic kind of. Yeah. It's like fun in the game uh, just to play along with his, that character. But in the show, they really change the character to really add a lot more to the story episode four is probably where there is the most development in the relationship especially from joel to ellie right and i don't think it's any coincidence that this happens after episode three ellie starts you know she gets this book and starts reading him puns stuff Mm -hmm. like that and these little jokes and you know you start seeing this kind of growing relationship you even see joel like have like say like a joke or something like small things here and there but i think one of the Probably the one of the really cool things that was in Chris Duckman's video that I didn't even think about. I don't know if you thought about this. How whenever they're first going to bed in the episode, uh, Ellie starts a conversation mm-hmm. on there. But whenever they go to the bed the second time in the episode, Joel starts a conversation. Right. And so you see this very subtle like growth in, like I said, especially Joel to Ellie. And it was also just so wholesome to see Joel laughing at one of Ellie's jokes. Because that's not something you see in the games early on, or at least not that I remember. Now, this episode brings me to some complaints that I've heard about this episode, but also just the show in general, and how there's not as many zombies, there's not as many people that Joel kills throughout the show. Because I think Joel in this episode, especially that there's this, that one portion when they run into the Raiders, like mm-hmm. they're driving and the guy like acting like he's hurt, you know. Uh, he, I think he kills three people. 
right in the game he kills a ton of people right that whole the whole section he yeah. like kills people from right there and then he goes into this building and kills like a lot more people you know and so i there's complaints about how he doesn't kill that many people in the show he only kills three people in that part and i just don't understand what exactly those people who complain about that like what they're thinking in regards to that because sure right. you have in the game and again it's a game thing. Yeah. When you have a game, it's not going to be fun if you're only killing three people an hour. Right. right? Mm. You want to your your character has to have these crazy abilities, like mm. Joel does in the game. He has so many. He can like see through walls. Yeah, he's pretty much Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see I mean, where everybody is. Yeah. And now you're saying, oh well, he only he only here like you know he can see through walls. Your you when you're playing the game <laughs> yeah. can see through walls. Mm. You can see through walls. Um, he can basically be attacked by the infected, unlike everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, like in, in in like most games, you can be attacked more than the people who are attacking you. Whenever he gets, whenever he gets some damage, all he has to do is like he like wrap some gauze around his arms. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's just towels. I think when you, you create it with towels and alcohol, yeah, right. And so you just wrap that around your arms, and you're good to go. You can't fix it with duct tape. You ain't use enough duct tape. In real life, that won't work that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just do that. And so it doesn't make much sense for like a 50-year-old man, like a worn down, tired 50-year-old man with hearing issues to be going John Wick all over the place. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, and honestly, uh, the the few amount of uh, like people he kills uh, actually added to, to the finale. But I'll get to that when we t start talking about the finale. But I, I do feel like it it kind of adds. Yeah, yeah, that. I do too. I do too. And like, it doesn't it make sense for him to be going like, to like be killing a ton of people throughout the entire show. You see what he can do. You see what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. You know, throughout like in little bursts, you see what he's capable of. And so that's to me is why I don't really like those complaints. Also, it would be kind of boring to have like a whole him kill a whole bunch of people every episode. If you have someone who can just kill a ton of people, kill a bunch of infected, be attacked by these people, be attacked by these infected, be okay, you know, and still make it out just for, like fine, it takes away the feeling of a threat and you're, the show no longer becomes interesting. Right. Because you're like, oh, well, he can just like live through anything. So like, yeah. why am I, why am I worried about anything right mm. now? Which I, I will say uh, by the end of the show, I, I, I do feel like they could have had a little more infected. Like I, throughout I, the, do, I will agree with that too. Um, especially considering the, the whole point of the show is I'm trying to make a distract to find a cure. So that there's not any more infected, but then like the whole time they barely see any infected. Yeah. So I do feel Feel like they could have a smidge more but not like too many too much more <laughs> definitely not as much many as in the game yeah which even in the game there wasn't even that many infected it, mm. it, most of the enemies were people mm. uh but yeah I, I do feel like especially uh considering in the second episode they introduced that thing about if you step on something yeah like a lot more alerted from miles away yeah but then like that's never brought up again like in the rest of the episodes and then episode five i don't have a lot to say about it but i will say even that was better at a certain points because you have a lot more time with Henry and Sam at the beginning uh, and like kind of what led him up to this point. Uh, it's, it's also, this is also another place where people kind of have complaints is like um, how the Raiders there, since there was like a, there wasn't like a whole lot of them also, but also you got to see more in. Yeah. Cause in the game, it's all from like Joel's and Ellie's perspective, but in the show, they were able to show a little more of the backstory with yeah. the group that's chasing them. Yeah. And so you get a lot more of that time, which is pretty cool. Um, the episode is really good. It is so sad, and honestly, if of course, if you're wa if you are someone like who played the game, you're watching with someone who didn't play the game. You're just probably sitting there like, oh no, like <laughs> yeah. And they made it even more sad than it was even in the game because uh, in the show they made uh, Sam be younger than he was in the game, and they made him deaf. Yeah, and I think it's also really cool uh, how they had Ellie like cut like her hand and like I, I probably just hit the, I just hit the microphone but <laughs> they, she like cut her hand and tried to like put it on his bite to see if it would work and she was she was kind of sure it would work and it didn't and that even made it even more sad they added that those little details that made this episode more impactful yeah and and, they, and also they, they kind of changed they, they didn't make like major changes to Henry but they made him because in the game he's a lot more um, hardened yeah he's a lot more tough on uh, Sam which Sam also is older in the game but he's a lot more tough and he, like 
survivalist in the game in the show he's more yeah, he even says that he's never made a kill which mm-hmm. it makes it even more sad that his yeah, first kill his was his little brother um but like e- even just that change makes it even more sadder because mm-hmm. he's not used to this kind of oh i mean he's used to because he's been living in t- for 20 years but like the situation that he's put in in this episode is just something that's completely unimaginable yeah. for somebody like him. This is a nitpick, but I do wish they would have kept the uh, the scene when El- from the game whenever Ellie uh, gets that toy from the toy store, and because uh, Henry tells Sam that uh, they mm. can't they can't carry the toy because they only need to carry what they need. But then whenever they leave, it's not revealed till, till later that Ellie actually picked up that toy and yeah. saved it for Sam and gave it to him right before they yeah. went to bed. Uh, after, but she didn't know that Sam had been bitten, though. But it, it, it just made you feel more connected to Ellie as a character, just that she would do something like that. And now we're at episode six, which episode six to me is where you really start seeing how much Joel really cares for Ellie. And honestly, you see a little more about the attachment from Ellie to Joel, a, lot, a little more than you do in the game for a certain reason. Uh, but when it comes to Joel, what I really like and what another thing that people had a problem with is Joel cried in this episode. Oh no. Like, oh no. <laughs> Joel cried. Oh no. Like, what What am I going to do as this? So somebody's yeah. going to make it edit like the uh, Avengers Endgame where yeah. they took out <laughs> yeah. all the, uh, the times that men hugged each other and all these other times they showed emotion. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I don't understand the problem with that at all. Like, Sure, would it have worked with him not crying? Yeah, but like, there's just so much more there with him crying because what he's talking about, you, what he's talking about and what he's feeling in this episode is he felt, he feels like he failed his daughter. Like mm-hmm. he, he feels like he failed her. He's the reason why she's dead, probably. And he is so scared that he's going to fail who he might not see it, know it yet, but in his eyes, in his mind, is his new daughter. Mm-hmm. And he's affair, afraid that he's going to fail her. Right. And so he has been thinking about this, thinking about this, thinking about this. And honestly, it's probably, it's it's a big reason why he's had, I th- he had a few panic attacks in this episode. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, that's a change that they made for the show, because he didn't have panic attacks in the game. So, mm-hmm. like, in this episode, it really shows the connection that he feels to Ellie mm. is the same that he, he felt towards his daughter, Sarah. Yeah, and there's like a cool little part whenever, because ha- he had like one panic attack, probably not really fully understanding why at that point, but then he sees this girl who kind of reminds him of Sarah, mm-hmm. and it hits him like, oh, that's what's happening. Right. That's why I'm having these panic attacks, is because I'm scared that I'm gonna, I, I'm, I just, I failed her, mm-hmm. you know? It's my fault she's dead, and I don't want to fail this girl. Right. I don't want to fail Ellie. And so there's just so much weight on his shoulders there. Mm-hmm. And like I said, would it have worked if he didn't cry? Yeah, probably so. But like, there's just so much more with him crying. And it's not like a full-on cry. It's mm-hmm. the kind of cry you would expect from Joel. Yeah. The holding back as hard as he can, but really can't hold back. Yeah, because in the game, he it's, that conversation between him and his brother was a lot more confrontational. Yeah. <laughs> like, more argumentative. Yeah. If that's a word. I think that's a word. Uh, th- there's more of an argument mm. of Joel wanting uh, his brother to take Ellie the yeah. rest of the way. I, I, I can't remember exactly how the conversation went in the game, but I don't think it stemmed from Joel not feeling adept to protect Ellie yeah. moving forward. Because, mm-hmm. like, he, in the show, he even explains that he's, he feels like he's getting older. He's not what he used to be. He doesn't have the same skills that he used to have. So he doesn't feel capable of protecting her the rest of the way. I also really like, and this is what I was talking about, how the idea like it really shows how much ellie kind of cares about joel and her connection to joel because i love that she does not run off in mm-hmm. in the show and the game it's a really random point yeah i i didn't like it when i was playing it which which i do want to say that i i played this game like right before the first time like right before the, like right when the show was starting mm-hmm. and i finished it probably like after like episode four ish so like i'm pretty fresh to the game it's not like i'm like connected to the game yeah yeah, and so to me and to me it's it's another part of the game where 
Honestly, I don't think they should have added it in. Even though it is just so they could kill more people, you can have more fun killing people. It is a part of the game that's kind of weird because in the show, and well, also in the game, there's like confrontation between Joel and Ellie. I think it plays a lot better in the show. Just number one, because of the buildup and that whole episode. That episode, he's starting to realize that he sees her as his daughter and that confrontation is like him. He, he It clicks for him. He's like, oh, I can't do that. I cannot see her as my daughter, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, but he still does. But also, in that in that same confrontation, she says like I would know. Basically, like she knows that he uh, he's the only person that she'd be safe with, or like like if she was with anybody else, she'd be scared or something right. like that, right? Mm-hmm. And so it doesn't make a lot of sense that she'd go run off by herself. Exactly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. And like it just to it, like I, I don't understand what they're trying. I mean, I understand that they want to add more gameplay, but just from a story standpoint, I really because like what you said, like she's just putting people in danger for yeah. no reason. Yeah. Like I, I don't understand why she runs <laughs> off. In yeah. The game. Yeah. And so I do like that they didn't make her run off in the game. I think that added a lot more to their connection because even though she's so mad at Joel. She's not going to leave. The end of this episode, I do feel like it was a little bit rushed because in the game, like Joel gets stabbed, which I do like that they changed it from him <laughs> yeah. falling from a second story onto a pole and getting impaled. Yeah. I feel like it's a little of a stretch that he would yeah. survive that, yeah. <laughs> especially with uh, modern hospitals and all that. In the game, like th- after he gets stabbed, like uh, Ellie has to lift him off the uh, pole, and then they're like, she's he's having to like lean on her, and it's like they have to make this huge trick out of the college mm. which I, I don't think they should have had ellie like kill all these people as they're walking out and yeah. joel like shakily shooting people and all that i don't think they should have gone all, all that there's just this connection that's made whenever joel is having to like lean on ellie and ellie's helping him uh back to the horse is, is the start of ellie taking care of joel episode seven is actually based on the dlc for the game uh and it's a flashback episode, uh, well, mostly a flashback episode to Ellie uh, whenever she was bit, pretty much. Uh, and it's her and her friend hanging out. Now, the first thing I want to say about this is I'm actually really glad that they have this episode uh, with the DLC because I'm honestly surprised that the DLC wasn't part of the actual game because, for one, I didn't really like how in the game they just time jumped mm-hmm. after Joel gets stabbed. They just jump in time to Ellie just yeah. taking care of him. I, I like the build up to her actually like having to fight to like uh, keep him alive. But also this episode really shows the reason why Ellie doesn't want to just leave Joel to die, even though he's like telling her to go back to his brother's house mm-hmm. or his other, his brother's settlement. Uh, this sh- this episode shows that she had just lost someone she loved pretty recently mm. when she was bit. And she doesn't want to lose the only other person that she has in her life that she loves. And this episode, uh, w- I do want to mention, which I-, I-, I want to mention for all the episodes, is that the production design of the show is just amazing. Oh, yeah. Like, the way they're able to build these sets that actually look like they've been decayed mm-hmm. over 20 years. It actually looks like it's a mall that they filmed in, and they just, like, completely ran it down. Yeah. And also, one change that they did uh to from the game in this episode is that in the game in the dlc is uh there it keeps jumping back and forth between the flashback and the mall with her friend and ellie in the present uh trying to find medicine to help joel uh and at first i was kind of upset that they weren't doing that in the episode but then by the end of the episode i was kind of happy that they did because i i kind of liked it because it built up to that decision for her to stay with Joel and help him and sew him up and all that. Yeah. Uh, because it shows that she doesn't want to lose him. Like she lost Riley. Yeah. And this is kind of episode like episode three where a lot of people found it to be filler. But like episode three where it had a lot to do with the rela- the development of the relationship from Joel to Ellie. This one has a lot to do with the development of the relationship between, uh, from Ellie to Joel. Now with episode eight, before episode eight, I honestly felt like everybody's criticism of the show being rushed, I completely disagree with. I felt like like, there's like things here and very, very small things here and there. But overall, I felt like the show added things when it needed to and it shortened things when it needed to. I felt like the relationship between Joel and Ellie was not rushed. I I felt like the whole show wasn't really that rushed at all, other than the minor, some of the few things we talked about already. Mm -hmm. But this is the first episode that, even though I liked it a lot, I do feel like there was parts that were rushed. There was one 
major part that I felt like it was rushed. I like what they did with David a lot more than in the game, how he's like pretty much his cult leader. And I thought it was really like a really disturbing detail that he, only a few people at his camp actually knew that they were cannibal. They were eating people. And oh they were yeah, cannibals, right, you know? know. But if there's one thing I felt I was kind of rushed about this, was there was no build up in that trust from uh, that that Ellie built up trust for with David. It was mm -hmm. kind of just she kind of just trusted him because she was sitting with him for a long time. Exactly. Yeah. And that the reveal, whenever he reveals that. Ellie is who he's been looking for didn't hit as hard mm -hmm. as it did in the game because I mean I don't mean to compare the game to the show so much but I mean it, it is an adap mm -hmm. adaptation of the game yeah. so it's kind of hard not to but in the game her and David have to fight together against a whole horde of infected yeah uh, and they're like in this like shack and yeah. they're like killing a whole bunch and i mean they didn't have to show like a whole horde that they're killing but maybe like a few that they have to say help each other protect each other yeah. for momentarily yeah or in that even, moment or even like maybe there was one about to kill ellie mm -hmm. and he saves her right you know like i don't think a whole horde would be necessary but like just a few two three right you know just something enough to where you're like oh she trusts him now, like she fully trusts him and like actually recently trusts him. Yeah, Not, I, I kind of trusted him too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the game, you, you you trust him. In the, I mean, in the show, they show they show a lot more beforehand. Plus, if you know about the game, you don't trust him. But mm -hmm. uh, it, w whenever it comes to him, he, he, you just need a little bit more. I, I, I just feel like that was the only part of this episode that was kind of lacking for me. Uh, I felt like everything else is really good. Uh, it's just that over. It's just that this was a first episode for me that I felt like, oh yeah, this is kind of rushed. And it also kind of adds to that moment uh, later on in the episode, whenever uh, Ellie saves herself by saying, "I'm infected," because it, it kind of makes a little more sense because they were just like fighting infected. So mm -hmm. David's like, "Okay, maybe she's telling the truth." Yeah. Let me, let me hold up here. Yeah. And then another nitpick I have, which I know I keep bringing up nitpicks, but it, it is things I want to bring up. Uh, in the show at the end of this episode, um, after Ellie stabs David to death and uh, she walks out, she calms down and she walks out and that's when uh, Joel uh, grabs her and like says that she, uh, it's him and all that. But in the game, like Ellie like stab is stabbing David and it's Joel that comes in and like grabs Ellie off of him, yeah. or, uh, off of David's corpse and calms her down. I feel like that that added a lot to their relationship too, because not only did Joel have to see like Ellie and what she's she had to go through, mm -hmm. and like seeing her in that moment, but also it's her, him that's calming her down yeah. after what she just went through. Yeah. Whereas in the show, she had already calmed down and walked outside. And I do want to just shout out Bella Ramsey's acting in the show. I mean, we talked a little bit about Pedro Pascal's acting throughout this video, but I do just want to give a huge shout out to Bella Ramsey because she just did phenomenal throughout this whole show. I think she has a bright future ahead of her. And it's really cool that uh, Troy Baker, the guy who plays Joel in the game, mm, got to yeah. be in this episode just as a small part, but it's just cool that he was able to be in addition to this. Now with episode nine, the last episode, I don't necessarily have a ton of stuff to say th about this other than the fact that I do think I like that this is kind of a beat for beat episode. Yeah, yeah. The the ending th they realized was kind of perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they're like, okay, we, this is not changing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, uh, th there was a flashback scene at the beginning of the episode that was in the game, which is really cool because it's uh, Ashley Johnson who plays Ellie in the game, uh, plays Ellie's mother in the show. So it's kind of poetic in a yeah. way. But what's what's really cool is that like she actually looks believably like uh ellie's mother like right. she, like, like like she actually kind of looks like yeah yeah it's because it, it, I, I didn't even know it was the actress who played ellie until yeah. after watching the episode and watching it i was like wow they got someone who looked a lot like yeah. ellie yeah <laughs> but now i know it's probably the other way around they yeah. got someone who looked like uh, yeah. ashley johnson <laughs> and i think this is kind of what you were kind of inferring a while ago how him not killing a lot of people i don't know for sure but like how he doesn't kill a lot of people throughout the whole show but then when it comes to this episode he kills like a lot of people right and it kind of just and i do and i i was thinking this before i just didn't know how they're going to play it off i just thought i uh, if you i don't have like a lot of tiktoks up but like on my tiktoks i brought up some stuff but i didn't want to bring up this point which is it kind of high it kind of makes this episode a lot more impactful mm -hmm. you know 
and a lot bigger of a scene because before you have Joel just shooting these people left and right, he literally is like just open like a lot of times, you know, mm-hmm. and he's able to just kill all these people, whatever, willy nilly, you know. I mean, and then whenever he gets to this, it's just he's killing a lot of people again. Right. right? Yeah. Exactly. And the show, it's like, oh, he's only killing the, he's killing these people. Um, just a few at a time whenever he has to or like there's one guy he kills where it was really easy for him he's just killing him with a knife so I like I like how that ha- so he doesn't kill a lot of people there but like in this episode he does and it just it, it kind of show- it's, it's another thing that really shows how much he does care for LA especially in that moment this isn't just like people that are just that are trying to kill him i mean they are now but yeah yeah, before these are just people that are trying to kill him these are people who are with him and he just blasts through them right yeah it's like something that he's been like like not waiting for but like he's been sulking in for 20 years his guilt of not being able to protect his daughter Mm. and now he's in a make or break moment yeah like ellie is gonna die if he doesn't do anything yeah so it really makes that so much more impactful that now he's killing a whole bunch of people uh especially since like we're not like used to it at this point mm-hmm. like it's something that's with the first time we're seeing him do it yeah so it just makes it a lot more impactful and i just love how in the gray this decision that joel makes is it really is a thing of uh, things aren't just black and white in the real world. I mean, I feel like a lot of people would have made that decision uh, whether they want to admit it or not. And they didn't even know if the cure would actually work or not. We could honestly make a whole video about this decision, honestly, and pro- we probably will eventually, or at least I want to. But overall, I absolutely love The Last of Us. I think it's one of the best if not the best video game adaptation that I've ever seen. Maybe there's better ones, but this right here is definitely at the the top of the list for them. It's also cool that most of the time whenever they recreate a scene that's from the video game, they have the characters on opposite sides than they are in the game. It's almost like they're paying respect to the game while having the show be its own thing. Or at least that's just how I feel is the reason. I mean, I do know the show has complaints, but I honestly disagree with almost all of them uh, because I just... Like people said, the the show is rushed. I just feel like as if every change, nearly every change in the show was made for the better. It was like it was short when it needed to, it was lengthened when it needed to, and then to have these small changes, it had some small changes to kind of tweak the story. But then there's these bigger changes that really just added more to the themes of the show and that development, the, that relationship and development between Joel and Ellie. Right, yeah. It, 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 like I said at the beginning, like it, it's kind of a toss-up in my mind between the video game and the, the show. Because like the video game did things better. There's gameplay, which added even more time to you building, building the bond between Ellie and Joel that you can't have in the show. But then the show did changes that added a lot more to the development of their relationship that built up to the end better than the game did. So it's like a toss up. It, it, I, I almost can't even say which one I like more yeah. because they're pretty even on yeah. my. I, I think I think with me in the development, it's like the rela- there's more time with Joel and Ellie in the game, but like in the show, there's more purposeful, like small scenes mm-hmm. between Joel and Ellie that I feel like even though you don't get as much time with you do, with Jill and Ellie as you do in the game, they make up for it in these subtle differences and these subtle changes that they do, especially in Joel's character and his acting and just like little tiny things here and there in the show. And I do want to mention that the writer and one of the two showrunners for the show is Craig Mazin. He was originally known for writing like the spoof movies, like he wrote some of the scary movies and he wrote superhero movie and he wrote Identity Thief and... The Hangover Part 2. But then all of a sudden, in 2019, he wrote and was a showrunner for the show Chernobyl, which was critically acclaimed by most people. And now he's doing this, which is regarded as one of the best live-action video game adaptations ever made. Probably the best. So if that isn't a good example of character development, then I don't know what is. Well, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, comment and let us know what you thought about The Last of Us. And if you want to, you can even rank the episodes. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and TikTok, all at The Awesome Padrona Show. And we both have individual TikToks, which we'll put down below. Yeah, he's a lot more active than I am. I'm trying to get on it. It's just hard sometimes. But yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and you will see us later.